Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see a lot of familiar faces and some new ones. Um, my name is Jason Judlica, and I am a consultant for Bausch & Lomb Specialty Vision Products. And it's... <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I have the distinct pleasure today of, of getting to talk to you a little bit about a new product that's been uh, out for a couple months, which I had the great um, pleasure of being able to work on with the folks at b and SVP to bring to market. And so um, that is, of course, the Zen RC lens. And if I might, can I just ask, quick show of hands, how many of you are have fitted or do fit the Zen lens in your practices already? Okay, so a fair number, probably at least 50%. That's awesome. And I know that some of you fit RC also because I see some of our initial uh, beta testers here, so that's awesome too. Um, so again, I'm just going to go through a little bit. For those of you who already use Zen Lens, um, you're going to find that Zen RC is very natural and it's going to be just something which if you're looking to incorporate a smaller diameter scleral in your practice, especially for those regular refractive air patients that may do well with the scleral. This is going to be a great option for you, and it's going to be very easy to use. Again, if you're familiar with Zen Lens, Zen RC works just the same way. If you're not familiar with Zen Lens, we will cover a little bit of how the Zen Lens family does work in terms of fitting, and again, how that applies to Zen RC specifically. So, you know, I've been fitting sclerals for about 14 years, and the, for most of that 14 years, these were the kind of eyes that we were fitting sclerals in, right? The train wrecks, the folks who had had terrible disease that we couldn't do anything else for them, and this was the, the lens of last resort. And, uh, you know, 2017, scleral lenses are changing the way we practice for a lot of reasons, and increasingly, these are the type of eyes that are being considered for scleral lenses. And again, why is that? Um, again, we know the comfort, the vision, all the good aspects of scleral lenses. One of the things that may be a little intimidating for these corneas over here, though, is the diameter of some of our traditional sclerals. Putting a 16 or 17 millimeter lens on just to correct refractive air can be a little bit intimidating. So again, um, Zen RC is looking to bridge that gap, the uh, scleral lens for our regular cornea patients. Why do we fit more scleral lenses now than ever? Uh, a big reason is, of course, the technology that's driving manufacturing, repeatability, um, just the quality and the accuracy which we can make scleral lenses and reproducibility. And also the wonderful materials that we now have as well. Um, without which, you know, if we didn't have the high DK materials that we have, the hyper DK, again, these would not be options. But we do have these. And so because of that, you know, those of us who do fit scleros, most of you I'm sure, you've had the experience of what it's like for a patient to be fitted with scleral lenses. And it's awesome, right? I mean, they are the best moments in our practice most of the time when our scleral lens patients get their first experience with sclerals and the wow factor. And it's a great thing to do for me in my practice. Again, I, I love those moments, and I'm sure you all do as well. And so because we have happy patients, it makes us happy providers, and we want to continue to make patients happy, and we want to continue to enjoy our practice. So what makes our patients happy makes us happy. And despite concerns about Sclera lenses, and we don't know all that much about the long term. What we do know is our patients who wear them are happy, and that makes us happy, and we just want to take the best care of our patients we can. So again, historically, sclerals were for the worst of the worst. And over time, we started fitting them in slightly less irregular corneas, milder cones, grafts, things like that. Now we're at the point where, again, we're considering them for refractive error for particularly our astigmatic patients who would benefit from GP optics, but perhaps 
aren't willing to adapt to or cannot tolerate corneal GP lenses. Uh, patients who um, may have issues with comfort, may have issues um, with, again, a need for a GP lens for whatever reason, but they don't tolerate a corneal lens. Uh, so these are, these, are, these are increasingly options for our patients. When we do correct refractive error, we've got a lot of choices. You know, beyond the surgical options, we can prescribe glasses, of course. We can prescribe soft contact lenses, and a lot of times they work just fine. Okay, corneal GPs still an option, uh, particularly for those patients who are longtime wearers and have grown to love them and, and have adapted to them well. We also have hybrids as an option, um, but we also now have scleral lenses as an option for these patients, and they they are an option because they provide excellent vision. They do correct astigmatism well, and they correct residual astigmatism well too. How, how frustrating is it when we a corneal GP on a patient and we end up with residual astigmatism? We can't fully correct them because it gets into now I have to prism ballast this lens and it changes the fit and the comfort. With sclerals, it's not a problem. Put that front torque on there, correct the, uh, correct the astigmatism, correct the prescription perfectly. And again, the comfort we've discussed, the other thing I love about scleros is they're really easy to wear part-time. You don't have to be a full-time, you know, five, six, seven day a week, 14 hour a day wearer like you do with maybe corneal gas perms to stay adapted and comfortable. For those patients who want occasional wear lenses, it's a great option. So this is a, a big part of where I'm going with these in my practice on my refractive error patients is those patients who Maybe they have worn gas perms in the past, but their vision or their comfort level is deteriorating. They just want to be able to wear them part of the time, and I bring this option into the equation. Okay, this is a part-time option uh, for correcting refractive error. You can wear it when you need to. They're comfortable. You don't have to build up adaptation. And so that's, that's one factor. And the other factor, of course, is going to be those refractive error patients that are just challenged with other options. So as with... Zen lens, when we brought that lens to the market about four years ago, one of the main driving forces behind Zen lens was the question I used to get after every one of these talks. Five people would come up afterwards and say, which is the best scleral lens? And of course, I would always have to say, it depends on what you are trying to correct because every design is different. And so if you really want to correct keratoconus and a flat post LASIK and a graft, you have to have three or four different sets. You know, Zen Lens was designed to bring everything into one fitting set so I could have one set. I could fit pretty much anybody out of that set because I have different diameters and different geometries all within the set. And so Zen RC, again, for the regular cornea crowd, is designed to be, again, that lens that you could basically fit everybody out of one fitting set. Again, this design, if you fit Zen lens, you'll notice some differences, and we'll go through the differences and the similarities. Um, but as opposed to Zen lens, where we had in mind fitting steeper corneas like keratoconus and flatter corneas, post-surgical, RC is designed for a regular cornea in mind. It doesn't mean you can't try fitting it on other types of corneas. But you just have to rec realize that the way the lens is put together is optimized for a refractive error regular cornea patient. Two differences um, from Zen lens to Zen RC is a reduced center thickness. There's definitely, you know, in the literature, in the lectures you're going to hear this weekend, there is a, a real uh, focus on making sure we're getting enough oxygen through these lenses to the health, to preserve the health of the cornea, minimize edema, and so as opposed to Zen lens, where your standard center thickness is 350 microns, with Zen RC it's 250. Another difference is um, there's a there's a slightly different profile to the lens over the limbus, over the limbal area, and through you know the the Zen RC lens that you're fitting now was the eighth version of that lens. It took us that many tries to get the lens we wanted ready for release. 
And one of the goals of this lens design was that we thought if we're going to refract, correct refractive error, and particularly if this is a platform for a multifocal, which is part of the equation here, the lens needs to center as well as possible. If you fit sclerals, you know the issues with the lenses decentering. And we really tried to overcome that with this. And throughout multiple iterations of lens design changes, one of the things that I found was the biggest driving force behind centra centration of a lens is not having excessive limbal clearance. When we get excessive limbal clearance, the lens drops. We keep our limbal clearance to a minimal comfortable level, that lens will center better. So again, slightly different design, but it's geared toward optical performance. Again, we're fitting this on our refractive error patients. They want to have proper vision. The fitting set, again, is pretty comprehensive. Um, it's a 20 lens set, and it's got two different diameters, just like Zen lens, which is 16 and 17. Zen RC is 14.8 and 15.4. And the basis for choosing the diameter is exactly like Zen lens. Your cutoff average cornea 11.8. If you're 11.8 or larger, you should be fitting the 15.4 diameter lens because the design is set up such that it will land on the sclera at a certain point, and that's appropriate for an eye 11.8 cornea or larger. If your cornea is 11.7 or smaller, then we recommend the 14.8 diameter, again, optimized for a smaller cornea. It also brings with it the smart curve, which is that tool that we have in the Zen lens, which makes it so easy to make modification without messing up the rest of the fit. So if I just want to push the lens up or down in one, one area in particular, I can do that without having to reconfigure the rest of the parameters. And so smart curve is part of Zen RC, just like it is with Zen lens. So the, the diagnostic set is really set up to, um, to be straightforward. And um, we'll go through the, the diagnostic set in a minute and show you how it all works. But it's got, again, the same markings that Zen Lens has, the little drill dots, which if you use the lens, you know this is where the lens should land. And if by chance you pick the wrong lens diameter and you see those little drill dots are not in the right place, you need to consider the other diameter. Now, there are going to be potential instances with Zen RC where you have a very large cornea. I mean, we're talking 13 or above. And in those instances, Zen RC may just not work. Most small sclerals probably won't work. And at that point, you may want to pull out your regular Zen lens set to try to fit that type of cornea. But again, the vast majority of patients are going to be able to fit, and you can use the drill dots on the front surface to help you locate the proper landing area. And you've got all these isolated um, changes. So if we want to adjust the height up or down, if we want to increase or decrease limbal clearance, if we want to tighten up the periphery, loosen the periphery, make the uh, peripheral system toric, you know, we, we have uh, all, all that is option. All those options exist. In addition, by going to a thinner design with this lens, you may find instances where you're fitting it on a patient with a fairly high degree of regular astigmatism, and you may see flexure more often than you'd see it with a thicker lens. I know that I do see that on, from time to time, a little bit more flexure on regular astigmats than with Zen lens. So again, you have the option of making the lens profile thicker, and not just the center thickness, okay? because if you just increase the center thickness, you may not resist flexure as much as you want but it increases the entire lens profile to out beyond to the limbal area so that it is more um, flexure resistant. So this is still an option too. And, and with Zen RC, you certainly can ask for the lens to be thicker if you want, if you feel like that's an appropriate uh, fitting parameter to adjust. So again, uh, same profile as Zen lens, our central vault area, we have our mid peripheral clearance. And then our limbal clearance zone here with smart curve, making the adjustments in between so that we can modify outside or inside of the smart curve without impacting the other part of the fit. This is just a, a crude diagram of how the, the smart curve essentially works. Um, if you've got a, a, a lens with the base curve, smart curve zone, limbal clearance, and the, and the peripheral curve system like so, 
and let's say we feel like our limbo clearance is inadequate. Okay? But we really like what we got here on the inside, and our peripheral system is really good too. We don't want to mess with that. We just want a little more limbo clearance. We simply adjust our limbo clearance curve, and the smart curve pops out to match it, and we've now created more limbo clearance. We haven't changed anything else about the lens fit. So again, part of what makes Zen Lens and Zen RC so easy to use is you are able to isolate the parameter changes you want to make without having to make other modifications to achieve those. So again, why Zen RC? Why is this lens um, my lens of choice for regular cornea patients? Again, great optics. Um, the smaller design does come in handy at times. Again, it's less intimidating for the average patient. There are instances, I will say, that I've pulled it out on irregular corneas that just have very small apertures, hard to work with with a large full diameter Zen lens, and it works wonderfully there too. Uh, it may not be as optimized for that eye as a Zen lens would because of the, it only has a single geometry. But again, you have all the capability to manipulate those curves to get it to be optimized as you need to. Again, the improved centration has got the great comfort that you expect with Zen Lens. When you put it on, the Zen RC is going to feel great. If the patient has any awareness at all, it probably just is that the edge is too loose or tight and requires modifications. Very infrequent. Um, I've, I got a, I've got a pair of Zen RCs. I've got a pair, um, and I, wore, I wear them all day with no lens awareness. So they're just extremely comfortable. Again, just like Zen Lens, Zen RC, you can expect the same comfort for our patients. What's different about Zen RC compared to Zen Lens? Again, the diameters are different. You've only got one geometry in the fitting set. You don't have a prolate and oblate option. It's all the same relative geometry. And again, that's geared toward the regular cornea patient. Where do we, where do we make up the difference in diameter? Okay, It's not on the inner aspect of the fit. Okay, It's not going to land in a significantly different place. The most of the changes, almost all the diameter change occurs in the landing area. So you're gonna have a narrower landing zone with a Zen RC than you will with a Zen lens. Again, because of the way the lens is blended and the way the uh, APS curves, the proprietary series of curves work, even that you will still see almost, you know, again, with Zen lens, I don't know about you, but I rarely see blanching as an issue. It's just such a nice, gentle landing that distributes the bearing so evenly that blanching is just pretty uncommon. And Zen RC is very much the same way. You just don't see the blanching, and it's, it has less to do with the width of those curves, has more to do with the way those curves are put together and blended. Again, slightly reduced limbal clearance relative to Zen lens. And, and the reason there, again, being these are more symmetric eyes, easier to work with, uh, less apt to have issues with centration in general, so we can pull that limbo clearance down just a little bit, get the lens to center a lot better. And the thinner design is different as well. What's the same from Zen RC to Zen Lens? Um, again, you've got the smart curve for the isolated adjustments, fully customizable. Zen Lens is, in my opinion, extremely easy to use and yet is as robust as you want it to be and as customizable as you want it to be to achieve the proper fit. You also have the same toric options. You've got the toricity you can add to the landing part to optimize the fit and you have the toricity you can add to the front surface to optimize the refractive error correction and you can combine them or if you only need a front torque without the back torque, you have the dual elliptical stabilization, which works so well for these lenses. Just a, a very good front ballasting system for the front torque option. And again, wonderful things we can do with scleros that are more challenging to do with corneal gas perms. If you have a back torque, so if you have a back torque lens to optimize fit for the sclera, and you have an over refraction with an oblique cylinder axis, that's no problem. You can mix and match the front and back toricity placement however you want to optimize fit and prescription independently. You also have the flex control option, as I mentioned. 
Uh, rarely do I ever use it with Zen Lens. With Zen RC, I'll, I imagine I'll use it slightly more because, again, I'm going to be fitting these on more regular corneas. And regular corneas are going to be more apt to flex than an irregular cornea because they have a meridian of that allows flexure to occur. So um, flex control is available. And, and again, the microvolt option that you have with Zen Lens is also available with Zen RC. So if you have a pinguecula or some type of conjunctival obstacle that's interfering with your ability to get a good fit, you still can use the microvolt. If you're not familiar with what the microvolt is, it's an isolated elevation to the uh, periphery as opposed to notching a lens where you cut a piece of material out. Um, the, the lab has the capability to actually create a, a small elevation in the peripheral landing system so that you actually fit over the elevation and, and keep it covered. Uh, less apt to get, have issues with debris and things getting under the lens and actually uh, is going to protect that spot more. Uh, sometimes when you notch a lens, my experience is a lot of times I end up with a lot of staining around a notched area. You don't get that with microvolt because the lens is actually covering the eye there. So fitting the lens is very straightforward and you know we're we're trying to move away from a base curve diopters based system for fitting sclerals because we really want to focus on fitting in depth and microns of sagittal height but when we're fitting a regular cornea it's just so simple to use the keratometry value to have the initial diagnostic lens and it comes out very accurate. So when you begin the fitting process with Zen RC, what you're going to do is you're going to do just like with Zen lens, first criteria is what's the HVID, measure it accurately, okay, looking at an eye and roughing it up, estimating it, that's not okay. You need some type of instrument in your office that you can get an accurate measure of HVID to the tenth of a millimeter if you really want to be successful. If you don't have that ability, you may just find that the lens you choose isn't the right diameter and you have to switch. But to make it simple, um, choosing the right diameter right out of the chute is better. And again, for me the criteria 11.7 or below versus greater than 11.7 is the cutoff I use. We're going to use average Ks. So if a patient's Ks are 41 by 43, average K is 42, we're going to pick the 42 base curve lens in the appropriate diameter. Okay, so it's very simple to choose initial lens selection. Um, it comes out very accurate. Just as, as accurate, I find that I put on one lens and maybe I need to put on a second. Okay, but otherwise, we're going to get uh, very close with our initial lens selection if we simply use mean Ks, and it, provided we've picked the right diameter. Once the lens is on eye, it's just like fitting any other, any other squirrel. I'm going to take an overview of the fit, make sure we've got limbal clearance and we're not touching the central cornea. We're going to go ahead and check our measure our central vault. Whatever your comfort level is for vault. You know, a, a few years ago, I would have said my ideal initial vault right out of the chute was maybe 350 to 400 microns. I think I'm a little lower than that now. I probably like 300 to 350. Looking at the lens immediately after application. So no settling has occurred um, 300 to 350. Okay, I can do the math, it's going to settle 150, right? So that leaves me 150 to 200. With a thinner lens, with a, a healthy cornea, I want to keep that vault down to around the 150 to 200 range after settling has occurred. So again, we're, we're, we're adjusting the clearance in microns. The one thing that's different too about Zen RC than Zen Lens is Zen lens comes in 300 micron steps, which is a pretty good jump. Zen RC, because we're fitting, we're trying to get a lot more fine with our fitting, is 100 micron steps. So you can be much more precise with getting the proper lens right on the eye, over refracting it, optimizing the fit um, without having to make a lot of adjustments in the ordering process. Again, after we've looked at the mid-periphery, the limbus, we evaluate the peripheral curve system, and again, we're fitting the lens, we're adjusting the peripheral curve system steeper or flatter in 30 micron steps, which is pretty small. A lot of times if you need to go steeper or flatter, you might have to go a couple steps. You can go up 10 steps steeper and 10 steps flatter. 
So the design allows you great latitude in changing the peripheral curve, making it a lot steeper, a lot flatter. The other aspect, of course, is the torque peripheral options. So if you simply see that the lens looks a little tight in one meridian, a little loose in the other, you mix and match as you're comfortable. You can order a lens with two steps steep by three steps flat. That's all you have to do. The lens will come in with 60 microns of uh, steeper curves in one meridian and 90 microns flatter in the other. When we evaluate the fit of a, of a Zen RC, you can see it looks just like any other square lens should. We've got central clearance, we have limbal clearance, and we've got a nice peripheral fit. This is a, a nice starting point for a lens. We then evaluate our clearance just like we would again with any other lens, white light, optic section. The lens itself is 250 microns again, so that's your reference point. Usually you want the vault about the same or a little bit thicker than the lens itself with the RC system. All the diagnostic lenses are minus twos and 250 microns thick. And that just, again, comes through the experience of, of designing the lens where we found things were optimized. Looking again at limbal clearance, what, what you're going to notice is that with our Zen RC, you're going to run into situations where your limbal clearance looks a little bit thinner than you might be used to. And you might have to increase limbal clearance a little bit more than you do with Zen lens. And that's okay. Personally, I think it's much easier to tell when I need more limbal clearance than when I don't have, than when I have too much. So I'd rather look at a fit where it was a little bit on the thin side and bump it up than to not realize that the lens I have on is excessive and not know how much to modify it. By the same token, if you have enough limbal clearance again already with your diagnostic lens, then you know you're on the right track for your fit and you're going to get the optimized centration that you need to get the lens optically uh, appropriate. Here's an example of a, of a fit on eye where you can see there's just not enough limbal clearance. Now, it may be that this situation is, is that this patient just needs more limbal clearance, but if you look at how much uh, lens there is beyond the limbus, this may just be a situation where this cornea is just too big. If this is a 14.8 lens, you'd want to pull out the 15.4. If it's already in the 15.4, they just may need a larger design. They may need to go to Zen lens 17 millimeter. Uh, again, limbal clearance can be adjusted or just diameter can be changed. Evaluating the peripheral curve system on Zen lens, just like any other lens with the RC, um, we're looking for areas where it might be a little bit flat here. You can see some shadowing to the edge of the lens, whether you want to steepen that up a bit. But again, you can see that this is a nice, well-positioned lens, fairly central, um, and, and it's going to give optimal optics there as well. You have the toric option. You know, again, I'm looking at this eye. This is how I judge edges when I'm just looking at it. I can see a little bit of a shadow right here that the lens is casting against the conjunctiva. And that tells me that this edge is probably a little bit too flat. Um, so I may want to ask for the lens to be steepened in just this meridian right here if it looks good at 12 and 6. Again, so easy to do. I can order in a standard peripheral curve system in the vertical meridian, and I could order two or three steps steeper in the horizontal, and I've taken care of this little bit of edge lift, which may be causing the patient some lens awareness or may allow debris to get underneath the lens. Using the, uh, uh, the, the Zen RC fitting set, one of the other nice things about it, other than the other than the lenses you have that are spherical is you've got a couple of toric peripheral curve lens options in the fitting set. The toric lens options in the fitting set correspond to the middle lens and the deepest lens. And the reason is, is that um, if you already have a proper fit and all you're trying to do is verify the peripheral curve system, it doesn't really matter whether your vault is excessive, but you can't have inadequate vault. So the, the decision was made in, rather than having every lens have toric peripheral curves to give a few options in the smaller diameter and a few options in the larger diameter and to choose the toric periphery if you find that you'd like to verify that as you're going through your fitting process. So again, the, the, in the diagnostic set, the toric lenses come in a flat two and steep two option. So one meridian is 60 microns more elevated, the other is 60 microns steeper. 
after we got our optimized fit, we found the right lens, we found the right central clearance, limbo clearance, we've adjusted the periphery, we over refract. Can start with a, a spherical over refraction if the vision is not acceptable. Again, you're absolutely welcome to look for a cylinder in the over refraction because it's very simple to correct that. Again, with this lens, you may want to consider the uh, uh, higher possibility that flexure is to account for residual astigmatism. And, and one easy way to kind of do that if you don't want to go through the trouble of doing Ks or topography over the top is simply to look at the patient's natural refractive error. If that patient in your chair has three diopters of width the rule astigmatism and your over refraction through the lens shows you have a diopter of width the rule at the same axis, it's quite possible that's flexure. Okay, if the lens is at a different, a or if the over refractive cylinder is at a very different axis than the refraction without the lens, it's probably not flexure. Again, you can verify that with a topography or with all Ks over the top, um, but that's kind of a quick troubleshoot that I use to decide whether I think it's flexure or not. Again, here's the different markings that come on ZenRC. You've got um, the drill dots, and these drill dots indicate where the lens should be landing on the sclera at, for the first time. You've got uh, dr the markings for the toric peripheral curve system, which indicate rotation. Um, you've got your, uh, a black dot on the right lens for marking, and no dot on the left. And, uh, the, right, the dot on the right lens, if you have to, uh, toric, is going to be on the steep meridian, while the um, drill lines will be in the flat meridian, like this picture indicates. Um, again, if you have a toric APS only, you're going to have the markings as well as the marking, the black dot on the other meridian. Um, and you have a, 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 a etching on every lens which tells you what the lens is, so that if you're thinking maybe it got confused in the diagnostic set, you can just look at the uh, laser engraving on the lens, it tells you what lens that is. So this lens here says um, ZRC, so ZNRC number three. So that's how you know that that is the lens that goes into vial number three. When you order lenses for patients, you're actually gonna have the, um, like the invoice number or the, the serial number, I guess, if you will, of that lens engraved on the lens as well. So you can tell if someone's not using a lens that they should have been prescribed. Again, your range, sagittal depth range, is, is very customizable. What's in the fitting set is what is useful 95, 98% of the time. But if you get that patient with a really steep, deep cornea or shallow cornea, fully customizable sags. Diameters are set with the two diameters only. Power range is pretty broad. And again, the advanced peripheral curve system, you can go steep 10 to flat 10, just like Zen lens. When you order a lens, if you want to keep it simple, like I try to do is I usually just call the lab and I tell them what lens I want. So I'll just say I want lens number three. I'll tell them the power I want and any modifications to lens number three that I want to make. Otherwise, I don't spend a lot of time telling them I want this base curve and this sag and this. And so I want lens number three with a minus four and whatever adjustments I want. Again, if you want to, you can specify all the parameters, but you can save yourself that time by just telling them what lens you're fitting. So, again, I, I'm really happy with the six months that I've had to work with Zen RC in my practice. Um, I, think it's a, I think it fits right in with Zen Lens in, in achieving our goal of just essentially making a, a smaller version of that lens for the times when you need it. And again, we're fitting more refractive air patients in it when it's appropriate. And um, if you have any questions, happy to take your questions. You can come up afterwards, but I appreciate your attention and have a great meeting.